Hello, welcome to Cardboard Alchemy's live stream every Friday or whenever you're watching this. We are a board game publisher that makes fun games and we like to go behind the scenes and also kick off the weekend talking about games. I'm Peter Vaughn. This is our second one for 2024. So it still feels like Happy New Year. It still feels like, you know what, let's welcome to January. Um, how's everybody doing today? Drama is Edge sneak peek. That's what someone's saying. Ellie is saying, uh, "Hi, Ellie. Yes, we're going to show some pieces from Andromeda's Edge at Cardboard Alchemy. We make games like Flamecraft, Andromeda's Edge, Critter Kitchen, and uh, Mission Catastrophe. Some other exciting titles. Hi, Axel. How you doing? And um, so we're going to go over the you know how what we're there in production. You can ask any questions that you want. You can try and find out about design or publishing or crowdfunding. Happy to talk about it." Love going deep dive into any one of these topics. We also have on our team, Rosie, in the comments, putting up your questions and answers and reminding me to do key things in these streams. It's amazing. Thank you, Rosie, for everything. Um, hello. Um, and also, I'm going to try and do, this is, uh, you know, uh, we're going to try and also get a little bit more organized on these streams and tell you what the topics are going to be in the stream so that you know what to look for, and then when it's on YouTube later, have a uh, break, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, bookmarks, something like that, so that you can go to the sections you want. So in today's stream, we are going to talk about some games getting played. Uh, I wanted to talk about, say, I, I love how, um, and I've mentioned Stonemeyer in the stream before, but I love how he goes over his favorite mechanisms. I also am just gonna show, talk about some games I played and then I'd love to hear what games you played when we get to questions and answers or what games you're going to play this weekend. I'm going to talk a little bit about Andromeda's Edge because, as mentioned, there is some brand new pieces that have come in from China, from Shanghai. Um, there, then I want to uh, showcase a member of our community who sent in something really creative that they do. Um, I've also got some announcements about Curter Kitchen and... The letters that are coming in from Flamecraft. Um, we're, we had some, uh, uh, we invited people to write in letters. I want to talk about that. Then we're going to play a match of Letter Tycoon. We started last week. You can jump in now. You don't have to have been here last week. We are playing one hand of Letter Tycoon on the stream and one hand off the stream. So that we're having a uh, orange versus green team. You can join either team or both and you can win copies of Letter Tycoon if you throw in words and we pick your name. Every month we're gonna give away a copy of Letter Tycoon. This is designed by co-founder of Carpet Alchemy, Brad Brooks, and I helped publish it as well. We worked on this a few years ago, but it's getting a new release and we're excited for that. So we'll play a round of Letter Tycoon and then we'll end with questions and answers, whatever you want to talk about. So games played. Now, I don't know if any, anyone uses BG Stats, which is a uh, it's an app that helps you track all of your plays. Every year I try to use BG Stats and then I fall, was it off the wagon? I don't know what the uh, correct term would be, but I, I use BG Stats and then I forget to use BG Stats. This is me trying to stay on top of it, there's so many reasons why BG Stats is cool. You input who played with you, where you played, what day you played. It'll keep track of like, you've played Dwellings of Elver 17 times this year. You've won once. <laughs> It'll do things like that so you can like go, oh, okay, that's fast. Or you always play games on Sundays um, or you play a lot with uh, Brad Brooks. Um, things like that, it's just fun to, for play testing, it's really good because then I can look back and go, who tested Flamebound? And I can actually just kind of keep track of every um, every play of a game. So what I played uh, recently, ooh, I had a number of games. I actually played Flamecraft over the weekend. That was really exciting because I got to teach it and then I got to play it uh, for with some people. It's always fun to play a game that's like an old friend and it's like, oh, Flamecraft, yes, let's play. Um, but I wouldn't, let's see, what I want to talk about is I played... I played another round of freelancers, so so round two. I think my second impression of freelancers is still good. Uh, I had more fun the first time, but I think what it's really good at is a one-off adventure for friends. So I think I don't know that it's meant for one person to consume all of it, or or one group to consume all of it. I think it's more like it's a really fun uh, adventure with some friends and. Uh, 
uh, it reminds me of a little bit of Mansions of Madness where there's only five adventures. Uh, and once you've played them, you're kind of done. I think freelance is kind of the same way, but I really like that. I really like how it feels and it, it's doing a great job at what it, it's. Um, so I played that one. I got in a game uh, with Grant Lyon and Rich Molina and Brad Brooks. I also played Three Ring Circus with those fellows. And I really liked Three Ring Circus uh, for that one. It's by Devere Games. And that's the one I wanted to focus on with about the mechanism that I like because you are putting on, you're putting on a show. And it's all of the um, it's sort of the the Midwest to the eastern side of the United States, and so you've got uh, possibly Chicago and Boston shows and stuff like that, Indianapolis, and you are Barnum and Bailey is actually there, and they're the the juggernaut, and they're making they're they're putting on shows as well, and they're the timer of the game. When they make a full round, the the game's over, and so you're going to put on shows to try and uh, compete with Barnum and Bailey and the other players, and you've got. Like it says, three rings to your circus, and you can lay these cards out in your tableau, and uh, you can put whatever you want in there. You can put lions in there, or elephants in there. You can put different uh, acrobats in there, fire breathers, or uh, clowns, or seals, whatever. Um, so why you want to put certain ones in a row has all sorts of interesting uh, consequences. For example, your travel speed. Uh, if you put cards that have more travel speed, you get to go farther. If you put cards that cover up your travel speed, then you get you, you're slow. You you can't move around on the board. You could put in things that match. You could put in things that score like, hey, I want to score for every animal to the right of this card. Uh, you could put in things like, hey, when there's a big show, they want a certain performer, so you got to put that performer. And they literally want a performer to the left and the right of that performer for maximum points. You can ignore that. Do all the little shows, or you could go big. I, lo I loved it. Um, I had a good time with that one. I think they got a great game on their hands. One of the, my favorite mechanisms of that game was that you have this economy. Like you've got some cards that you can use for money. They're actually money or cards you can lay down. And they're what pays for everything else. So they're kind of like the early, you put those down early, and then you use those to pay for, say, an acrobat. Let's say an acrobat is... 14 bucks. I mean, however the thing works out, right? Acrobat's 14 bucks. So you're thinking, okay, so I've got all these other cards in my hand. And this is like sort of, I like multi-use cards, first of all, where a card in your hand could be played or it could be used as currency to pay for another card. So you've got like a really good, um, you've got like a clown or something in your hand and you're like, ooh, I want the clown, a clown and a duck, say. I mean, there's silly things in there. And you're like, ooh, I want these cards, but if I want to put that acrobat down, I'm going to save up all these cards to play the acrobat. What's great about that is they only make you, this is the mechanism that I really like, and I could see this going in some other games. They only make you pay the difference between your top card. Uh, the one you're playing, you look at the cards you already have down. You only have to pay the difference between your highest one existing and the one you're now playing. So if I'm playing a 14 and I already have a 10 down, I only owe four bucks. That's pretty cool. And not only that, if I play, if I already have a 10 and I play a nine, that's free. That's free to put in my circus. I, I love that that economy exists because it's tight. The money's tight. You're trying to like, on your turn, you can either put on a show and make money if you're going to a small town. And by the way, after you're done putting on a show at a small town, they don't want to see you again. They're like, yeah, we've seen that show. It's really thematic and fun. Um, but I love that mechanism. I mean, I love the building of the tableau. This reminds me of games like you know, Earth is really important to build a tableau. Um, obviously, in Dwellings of Elder Vale, I like tableaus. I have no problems with tableaus. And in uh, Andromeda's Edge, which is a game we're making, you have a, a tableau of um, sort of, you know, your engine is what you're attaching to your um your space station. And that's really important how you lay those out. In fact, Luke uh, and Maximus, when they were designing it, you can move those around, but once you, there's certain ones that have to lock in um, and in three ring circus, they're they're locked in unless you insert a number that kind of pushes them. And that's really also interesting. Uh, it's fun to look at that. The Tableau uh, board area itself is kind of an interesting component in games um what are the rules for how to add to a tableau and what can you change what can you not change how do you use it um in the in three ring circus when you cover something up sometimes you're covering up a power that gets activated i've seen luke use that before in his designs where something 
covers a space and that's when you get the thing. Um, and so that's really an interesting dynamic. In fact, I won't go into the details now, but there's a part of Flamebound that might use a tableau of sorts. It's gonna be exciting to look at that. It's one of the reasons why we play games like Three Ring Circus, because we're looking at all the different ways that people are doing different mechanisms. And so that was really fun. I also actually played um, just on the other the other list of things. I played played Point City, had not played Point City before. Had a fun time with that one. And last week I was talking about standalone sequels, and it feels like this is an interesting case because um, in almost every case I've seen now of someone making a standalone sequel, it's to make a more complex version of the game. Like I was thinking about if we were talking about it afterwards, if we had people come over and it was brand new, like new gamers or kind of a lighter uh, night of gaming, we might pull out Point Salad versus Point City um just because there's more to think about in terms of your you know point city has a little bit more going on it doesn't have a lot much more going on but it's a it's a successor that has more teeth in i think so interesting that that's another interesting comparison because here we are making flamebound and we're thinking about its complexity to flamecraft and what it will do more on that as we uh, get into that topic another day um, I also played Dwellings of Elderville, by the way. That was really fun. I played a an unreleased expansion for Dwellings of Elderville, and it went great. Oh man, that's good stuff. Dwelling, that's not our that's not our game at Carbon Alchemy, but I, it is my baby because I helped uh, come up with the idea, work with Luke on the design, developed it, art directed it. Dwellings is my one of my faves. And it's always fun to play that game again. It's so refreshing to play that game and find out, yes, it it kicks butt. I'm uh, I know I'm biased, but it's it's whew, that's a good game. Always a good game. All right, so enough about games. I want to hear what you're playing, but I want to talk about we we I highlighted Andromeda's Edge in the middle of all that with its engine. Oh, look at that! Forest Shuffle, Gizmos, and just started Potion Explosion. Ah, oh, those are those are fun. And thank you for making, I have to call out Axel right now, who started the, there's a Cardboard Alchemy. So on our Discord, it's a small shout out for our Discord, uh, there are games happening. And there's a Cardboard Alchemy group on Board Game Arena. And if you want to join in, there's actually a channel on our Discord where some of the chat happens. Or you can search for the group, I believe, on, on Board Game Arena and find it. And then they're launching different games. Um, I've played a couple. I played uh, Castles of Burgundy that way. I know there's a Letter Tycoon game that might have started up because we were talking about Letter Tycoon and we're playing Letter Tycoon in these streams. And now I'm really excited that a fan made a uh, Letter Tycoon uh, mod in Board Game Arena. It's really fun. In fact, that mod inspired a rule change to Letter Tycoon in this new version. All right. Oh, look what they're playing over there. I mean, we talked about it, but also Ark Nova, Azul. Man, there's some fun games. I I like Board Game Arena a lot. I've played um, some good games of Tapestry over there. I did. I, I have had some uh, good games of Lost Ruins of Arnak over there. Oh, man. It's good stuff. As I mentioned last week, games uh, can, for all of us who are interested in the hobby, they can really... Uh, you know, I was saying the words fill my cup or they can get you all excited. And I definitely feel in that um, inspires you, especially when you're in our position of making games, you see another publisher do something fun and interesting. And that is inspiring as well. But I did talk, I did say we were going to talk about Andromeda's Edge. Let's do that. So Andromeda's Edge is in its pre-production phase. It's almost done with that phase. And we're working really hard on the latest stages to get the uh, the game trays all finalized, and we're like a tray away or something. It's really close. Uh, part of that balance is getting the lid on the command carrier balanced with the top of the box and the way the raiders feel. And the raiders have like a multi tray going on, so there's a lot to get right. And so we're on that final bit. Uh, also, in the paper department, we're making the box and we're making the all the boxes there's like tuck boxes for different products uh there's there's 12 different add-ons um there's four or five different versions of the game depending on like what configurations and so we're doing all those boxes and that part can be a little 
um, tedious because you've got barcodes and and SKUs and text and and like for example on the back of the box you have to I've already uh, I know everyone who's getting a copy of Andromeda's Edge is sold but but that box is going to be sitting in a retail store and how do you make that back of the box exciting say the right points show the right things uh, maybe in, in a future stream I'll actually put up a copy of the the back as we've got it now, but it is, it is so hard to make a back of the box that says everything that's going on in Andromeda's Edge, because there is just so many things happening in that game. For example, you want to say like, okay, there's variable player powers, but there's 18 different factions. How do you convey how cool that is? You, and you want to show that faction art because it's so neat. But then you're like, wait a minute, but it's the worker placement that's so exciting. Oh, wait, no, it's the engine building that's so exciting. And as you're doing that, you're like, oh, I want to see some cards fanned out, like tactics cards. Because then if I see that on the back of the box, that's going to make me excited to play. But you know what else is exciting? You want to see, like, if it's the deluxe one, you want to see, like, you want to see minis on there, you know? This thing, um, this is the Void Drake. And the Void Drake can't be on every box because it comes in the expansion, so it's not in the, so I can't, we, we didn't put this on the standard box, uh, but we put on the, um, and you get the all in box. And so every, uh, and Drummond's Edge is a, is a, is a, it, um, it's a lesson for crowdfunding. Don't, don't do this on your first go because it is like so many pieces. Uh, I took it on because we took it on because of dwellings and I figured we could do it. And it is, we're doing it, but it is a, it's a lot to make it. And even when we look at the back of the box, I'm like, oh, it doesn't even talk about events. It doesn't mention them because it doesn't have room. There's just like so many things going on. Um, but here's what came in the other day. So so all the paper is being worked on and the trays are almost done. But meanwhile, I think a lot of people know this, the minis are, are cooking. And we've been doing refinements on every little piece of it. Like I want the perfect fit for the way uh, a building slots into a transport. And then uh, I want the perfect fit for the way a leader slots into a building. And there's just all of those things to get right. And we've gone back and forth on different buildings just to get it perfect. In addition to that, China's been working on a wash because our, our all-in product and something you could buy to add to your deluxe game is a wash. Mm -hmm. And so... How does that work for player pieces that are colors? What I, what we didn't want to have happen is that that wash turns a yellow ship and a green ship and a blue ship into a dirty, unappealing, or or kind of makes all the colors the same. I mean, they are still player pieces that we want to be unique. So, for example, I'm going to show some. One of the things we didn't... So we had this yellow... It's hard to see the wash, probably. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get the watch. It's very light. See, it's very um, subtle, but it starts to show the detail of the piece. Let me show the science vessel. It's going to be difficult on the stream. I need some images in here for next time. But there's just a little bit of a, um, there's a little bit of a texture added. And so when you have a light blue piece and you add a dark blue wash to it, it creates um, just a, I don't see if the transport works better. It just the nooks and crannies get um, they get featured. It's what we would call in th in like three D space, like um, um, ambient occlusion, where where I mean it's a it's a you know just to enhance the plastic a little bit. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Um, is that gonna work? Let's see if I get that. Thank you, Axel, for the idea. It's hard to, it's, you know, the thing about a lot of these things too, as I'm displaying these things for uh, GameFound, is that lighting changes everything. So I could see a piece in my hand, like a, uh, a green fighter with the wash on it, and I could try and show you this, but it's going to be affected by the lighting conditions of the place we're in. You'll just have to trust me that these are amazing. I'm particularly excited by the fact that before we didn't have the right purple, now we do have the right purple. Um, this is a beautiful purple that has come in. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, so do we have new purples? Yes, we do. That's the purple color. It is fantastic. Uh, the wash is great on it. 
The Thomas. Okay, oh, yeah, this is a funny comment from Stephanie. Um, it's what we call the Thomas English muffin effect. <laughs> All those nooks and crannies. We also have a new uh, white. This is the washed version of the white. It's now finally there. I'm super excited by what is happening. This is the Probe Mini. That is one of the things if you're playing solo. I know Mark is going to explore solo who's in our chat. And uh, the Probe follows you around every turn. So I'm really excited to say that the, the green, the blue, the yellow, the purple, and the white, the player colors are done. We're solid. Um, we are getting the finishing touches on the Raiders, which are looking good. Like I showed you a Raider that's on a stand here. This is the Void Drake. And um, the Raiders are looking amazing. Everything's coming along on the minis front. Um, so that was my, my behind the scenes. I wanted to show you that the minis are... We also just approved the... Um, I don't know if this is going to show through as well, but these are like the tokens. We've got these uh, translucent uh, tokens. This is for the event board. We have another one over here for... This is the Terminus marker. Um, this is sort of in the game, uh, pink ends up being victory points. And so this is going to go on the board for where the end game, uh, moment is in the game. You'll put the terminus marker. Yeah. Someone's like tasty lozenges. What well, these are. Yeah. They look really, uh, yummy. Um, so we got those cooking and we also recently did the score markers for players. So it's actually two sided. So the star is different depending on which side you want to start on and as you loop the board you can flip it over to the other side to show you um that you've lapped so we're working on all the wood all the acrylics all the plastic that's all going great and then we're working on the final touches to the paper working on back and forth with luke and maximus to get the card text just so for example when you play the solo version of some of the events that changes for the unity player that's the solo opponent and so we're making sure all those cards are uh detailed out for the solo cards uh it's so many so many things a uh, huge shout out to my whole the whole team at cardboard alchemy for the this intense work that we've all been going through Anyway, so that was a bit about Andromeda's Edge. We will do another update on the game found. If you are following along over there, I will deep dive some more into the, some of those things. Other announcements. Um, I wanted to mention that next week's stream is going to be dedicated to Critter Kitchen Pledge Manager because that is coming around the corner. We're going to get out a Pledge Manager. A lot of people, uh, we're going to be using Backer Kit. You may have used Backer Kit plenty of times. It may be your first time using Backer Kit. It is the way that we uh, find out if you want to upgrade anything, get any new things, pay for shipping, taxes, check out, get the whole thing ready to go. And we're going to try and move fast on Curta Kitchen. So we'll get the pledge manager open, get everybody's situation solved. We'll actually be opening a late pledge. So if you missed Curta Kitchen, you'll be able to come in and get the same deal. Uh, uh, as on the Kickstarter, minus the promotional cookie cutters, but you can still buy those. Um, but you'll have the same uh, chance to get all the perks, same price, everything. Uh, we will do the late pledge for a little while, get our final numbers, and then we're going to get that baby, that we'll get that game cooking in the oven, printing it to deliver this year. Um, you know how things gotta we gotta work on all the parts there, but it doesn't have any plastic or a lot less plastic, it does still have plastic, but a lot uh smoother, I think, with just the wood pieces for the main characters. Uh anyway, next week's stream I will dedicate to pledge manager questions. So if you want to talk about anything critter kitchen and how it works, uh, we'll also put out an update and we'll tell everybody that this stream is gonna be dedicated to questions. Might still play around a letter tycoon, I don't know, but we'll do a lot more uh, focus on the pledge manager part. And if there's a lot of questions, maybe we'll even postpone the game. Um, that announcement, I also want to talk about the letters that I mentioned at the top, Flamecraft. Um, what we said is we released four new shops in 2023, promo shops that you can get a different couple different ways. We are still offering one of them on our website, Stuff the Magic Dragon. And we have another way to get it, which is to write a letter in details of that is in um 
Well, I know it's in our fall newsletter. We'll probably put out another set of details um, about how to do that if you want to do that. Um, and I ha sometimes read those on the air. I'll probably read those on the air um, sometime later in January. So um, just because it's awesome to get people writing in. There's so many good ones. We've had really exciting ones uh, lately, um, including Rosie wrote in a letter. I didn't know Rosie was going to do that. That was really fun. So we'll read some of those letters in a future stream. But today we've got other things to do. I've one more thing before we get into Letter Tycoon, which is we also got a package in the mail that was really special. Uh, we have a member of our community, um, Carly, who does has a company, Dragonwood, makes these custom. This particular product is interesting because it is is to hold coasters. Now, what company do we know makes coasters? Oh, we do. Um, we put out coasters with all of our campaigns. And so I'm going to show you how easy this is. This is a really simple, this is really well made um, in terms of it, it's it's built and ready to sort of um, slot in new, you know, it's so easy to, to say, put in a different set of coasters if you want. And well made, uh, crafted. There's her shop. Thanks, Rosie, for putting the shop. Thank you, Carly, for sending these in. The other one I wanted to focus on is there's a, because our campaign came with um, art cards, Carly specifically made a board that holds uh, three by five uh, postcards, which is neat because if you have those from the campaign, you can put those in there. But I actually tested it also on, so now it's going to be a little loose. They don't quite fit shop cards, but I was trying it on shop cards and it seems to work as well they're about the same size as a postcard as one of the art prints let me see if i can line these back up um of course doesn't want to play ball right now uh but anyway this was really thoughtful and i'm and i'm excited by the to the chance that i get to display these on the wall so if anyone's interested we put up the website so you can go say to carly that you also like them this one's not playing ball right now because I'm doing this one handed while trying to do a stream. But let me see one second. I'm putting these back. Like I said, these are not the postcards. So they're the shops. And also they're shops from, you can tell they're from the Chinese edition of Flamecraft. Um, but I wanted to test it. There's this little area for each of them to sit in there. Actually, I, I have it upside down even. Terrible. Done terrible. Um, but it's also got the, it's thematic to Flamecraft. I wonder how other games that she has on there. There's thematic to Flamecraft because it's got the, the wooden, uh, sort of the heart designs, which were really cool. All laser cut. Very neat. I can't wait to display those for guests to come through the office and see. All the beautiful, uh, shops from Flamecraft will, will pick our best, uh, scenes to display. All right. Um, so we play some Letter Tycoon. Let's do it. Let's get into Letter Tycoons. We also have um, question and answer to do. So Letter Tycoon, if you missed last week's stream, is a game by Brad Brooks. It's a game where you want to uh, own the alphabet. So you are going to... Let me get a screen up here. You are So Letter Tycoon uh, is a, a game for two to five players. And you're trying to own the alphabet. Uh, you buy, you t you spend your turn spelling words out, and then you buy a letter in that word. Then you own that patent on that letter. If anybody uses that letter, so if I buy the A, anyone uses an A, you owe me money. So uh, it's really fun. And then some of the letters have powers on them, so you can buy the less popular letters like Z or V or uh, Q, and then you get a power that you can use during the game to help you to help you out. Now, the person who, after a number of letters from the alphabet hour have been purchased, then it triggers the end game and you add up your money, your patents, and your stocks. Whereas the most uh, financial gain is the letter tycoon. So we're playing it on stream. Uh, and what we're doing with that is uh, we, we have an orange team, which is going to form a word while we're talking right now. And you can win a, a copy of Letter Tycoon every month that we do this. Um, you can win a copy just by throwing some words out, whether your word is picked. And then we're going to have an away team, a green team, where uh, while we're while it's on YouTube and we're waiting for the next week, there's another word so you can keep playing if you want and submit a word. So here's where we left off. 
Uh, let's see if I can find. Okay. So where we left off was the orange. Actually, let me go to, let me go to our score here. One second. Uh, so there's a score for this week. Um, these are the letters you can buy. The D and the V are, are faded out. I will talk about that in just a second. But if you look at our score here, the orange team has four points because they bought the D and the D is worth four points. And the overall goal of a two-player game is to get to 45 points. So we're on the, the orange team is on the board. Has two coins stock left, two coins left over from the last turn, didn't use, and has two stock. Now stock you can't spend. It's just if you do big words, you get some extra stock. And it's just points at the end of the game. Uh, the patents that Orange has currently is the D. That's why that one is is um, is uh, is uh, faded. And that means if the green team forms any word with a D, and the orange team is hoping that that an E D or something happens at the end, if any word is formed with a D, then Orange will make a dollar each D that is used. And they have no powers yet. Now, the green team has two points, but I'm going to explain how they got the two points. So let's go over. They had a hand of cards. Let's see if I have anything with what they had. Okay, this is what the green team had to work with. And like I said, the green team is the away team. So this was posted on YouTube. We had Chris and Brad chime in and a bunch of other people chimed in. Um, and they had some choices to make. For example, uh, the Z and the V have a power on them. So if you form a letter with those letters, you might get that power. So the ZSG is the community cards. The H-M-A-V-E-R-E -E was their hand. And in the end, they chose to spell Greaves. It's a seven-letter word, which if we look at our scoring here, let's see if I, if I can get our scoring. Um, uh, let's see, let's get our scoring, scoring card here. So you can see that seven letters is $6 and a stock for that. And so we're going to give them, gave them $6 and a stock. If you look at the rest of the board, the M and the H are cards that they did not use in their hand. The Z was the leftover card from the, so was not used in the community letters, which means Z will continue to the next person's turn, which is what we're going to do right now. This is the orange team. So if we look at the orange team, what ended up happening with the orange team? Well, so the Z is still there, right? Because because green didn't use the Z. Uh, so that's still there. And I had to deal out two more letters to the community. So two more letters got dealt out. It's actually a V here. Actually, wait, before I get into this, I want to talk about what happened. Let me go back a second. So Greaves, now what happens is, is that with $6 and a stock, I made the decision, or we talked about it with Brad, of what to buy, and I, we bought the V. So green team bought the V. Now, let's go back to patents for a second, because I want to explain that. Let's bring up the V. The V has a power. So the V is not the most popular of, of letters, and there's only two in the deck. And uh, so it's cheap. It's only two bucks, and it has a patent, a letter, a power on the patent, which is you may build two words. So that is what... Uh, what green bought and so you can see green now has uh four coins left over because that only cost two bucks and there was actually six bucks made from the word greaves and they've got one stock they own the v and they have now the ability to make two words on their turn so there's some stiff competition for the orange team that's what green's got going on now let's go back to the table so what i was saying was okay let's say the z was left over now we deal out the E and the T and the V. The V got dealt out. That's the second V in the deck, which means if orange team uses that V, then green team makes it a, a, a dollar. So we'll have to be careful about that. Meanwhile, O and S was kept from before. And uh, when you fill up your hands, you're allowed to ditch any letters. We, we at the time last week decided to keep the O and the S. So what was dealt out to the orange team now for our work here is uh did i have one more letter yes there's two o's so this is what we got dealt now the fun begins to this is our hand o s h o r u a with the community letters z e v and now uh anyone who wants to suggest words here i will with rosie's help i will uh, try and get those spelled out we can move cards around if we need to these are some good letters. 
I mean, yeah, you can form a lot with this. And the question is, you know, because Chris, who has been playing both teams, I think, which is fair, uh, was advocating buying the Z in the green team's turn. But now that the Z has not been bought, you could, of course, form a word with Z and grab its power, which is that you can always add a free S at the end of every word that you make. That is the power of the Z. Um, you can use the V, like you're not, you can still use the V, but that is the one that's going to cost, that's one that's going to reward um, green dollar to use it. Chris, like, Chris is like vetoing, helping us. <laughs> oh, nice. Chris is green team now. Uh, we got a word. We have Hoover's, but I think Hoover is a brand name. There are rules in Leonard Tycoon that you can't do a proper name or noun or whatever. Let's see Although, like, can... now people say hoover up. Like, it's now like a, you know, to hoover up food. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's become yeah. so well we known as a... That word and get possibly... Let's, let's, let's put the letters in position, actually, and just... Zoos. Oh, what was that? Zoos. More than one zoo. <laughs> zoo. That's nice. <laughs> well, let's lock some of these other letters that are behind here. I find that o OBS, which we're using to play this, is not bad, but I have to... It's hard to get layers selected sometimes. Uh, once I get it, oh, I should be good. So we were talking about like that. Now, of course, you know, that is using the the V. Not to say that we can't, but, you know. Oh, Hoover is a British slang thing. Well, fine. <laughs> All right. We can't do that. Rash. Uh, oh, thanks, Mark. <laughs> which one? Rash. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. We, yeah, you can form anything that's three letters or... Now, uh, strategically, also, what we're looking at, at thinking about here is um, what letter... Now, we have $2 left over from the last one. So, for example, if you form a... Let me get the scoring card up here. Uh, if you form a four-letter word... Um, was that locked? I'm going to move that. Uh, let's move that. If you form a four-letter word, you get $2. Okay? So the thing about forming a four-letter word, uh, getting $2, is you'll have two and two leftovers. You'll have $4. But you can see that the R costs six, the A costs eight, the S costs six, and the H costs five. So you'll have $4, but you won't be able to buy anything. So we want to try and shoot higher than than four letter four letter words. Unless you want to save. Unless you want to save. I mean you can also save at any time. Like you can you can say, well, you know, uh we can save up our money, show people. Uh so that would be like the so five letter word is three dollars. Um and we could, you know, with our other two dollars we could buy the H or we could save our money. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So let's see if anybody has any other the longest word so far, well, hazes. I don't know what hazes means, but hazes. You um, haze somebody. But an hazer, is that like to avoid someone or to ghost them? Is that what it means? What? <laughs> to. I don't, I don't know what it means. <laughs> you can also raise something to the good. Uh, these are, this, is a, this is a combo of letters that seems mean. Um, um, Michelle says arouse. <laughs> it's not a mean one. Here we go. <laughs> it's the torture them. Thank you, Stephanie, for an explanation of haze. <laughs> Is that right? Do I have that right? I'm a terrible at spelling. Yeah. Now you um, tell us. <laughs> I, I, you know, what's, I, I don't know if I've told this story before, but I published Letter Tycoon when the very first time I could beat Brad at the game, I thought, well, let's publish it. Because if I can <laughs> challenge somebody with a better vocabulary, then that's an interesting, because, you know, if we're if this is a game where Brad could just clean me, you know, like wipe me, uh, wipe the floor with me every time, that's not going to be fun, right? So mm -hmm. what I think really changes this game around is that the powers and sort of the flexibility with it being able to discard a bad hand. There's a lot of flexible parts of this game. Uh, so we can form a rouse. Does anyone have a better word? <laughs> I can't wait to share this word on social. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was really funny when Letter Tycoon first came out. People were like, here's the word I made, and they're spelling it out with the cards, and I'm like, I can't retweet that. Um, as, as yours, as A-Z-U-R-E-S, 
Um, now, I don't know what that means. My brain's telling me it means blue in Spanish. So it does <laughs> mean blue. Um, so I don't, you know, what we'd be probably agreeing upon at the beginning of the game is an English dictionary. So I don't know if we could get away with that. Um, mm. Also, um, I saw a shore, which is quite a good one. Like running ashore right? with your with your boat. <laughs> yeah. Let me go Let's see. I like that one. Uh, that it's would be a good. Shade of blue in English, is it? Ah. Yeah, yeah. Right, there we go. It's a very fancy one. <laughs> sure. Now that's a good solid. Um, six six letter words are four dollars and a stock. With uh, two dollars in the bank, that would give us six dollars. And of course, you could uh, either save or you could buy the the R and the S. They appear in the game. There's a frequency chart. Let me bring that up here. They appear in the game, I believe, six times. The frequency uh, R is six times. S is six times. Yeah. Brad has said that Azure's is okay. It is a blue. A selection of slightly different blue shades would be Azure's. Look so using the Z's pretty cool. Do we? I don't think we could afford. We could afford the Z. We could buy the Z. Oh, the Z, it's yeah, it's only $2. That would be really fun because Chris really wants it and he's not on our team. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so this V was right here because it was, um, there was Z, Z, V, E right down here. So this is the community area that's not being used. If we make Azures, then we will be earning um, for a six letter word. Four dollars and a stock. Is that what we want to do? Mm. Michelle is asking if you own the letter S and the other team has the Z ability and adds an S to the end of the word, does it count as using an S? So it does not. So in the rules, what that that bonus S from the Z, it's a phantom S. You can use it. It does not. It's not playing a card. So the the S patent owner cannot collect on all the Z. Yeah, there you go. Brad's got it. The phantom S do not trigger. Um, it's a good question, though. That's a great question. We don't want the Z player, the owner of the Z patent, to feel like, ah, my S is like no good if they buy the S. Um, so that is. Um, Let's get the votes in. Should we do this and buy the um, Z? I'm sorry, I'm British. I want to say Z. The Z. <laughs> Should we buy the Z? Get your votes in. Say yes, yes to Z or no to Z. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah. So the word in buying the Z. And the other thing that, that we could do, just so everybody's aware of the choices, is we could forget the power. If we're going to make $4 in a stock and we have $2 in the bank, the, the available letters that we could buy out of this word include the U, not as exciting, uh, possibly, but also the R and the S, which are exciting because they do come up a lot in the deck. So the choices would be go for those consonants, which are going to reappear and give the green team a harder time with trying to make R and S or, R or, you know, use R's or S's or answer back with that V power by getting a, a power as well. Those are sort of the choices, right? If we're going to form this word, which it looks like we are going to do. I think we're going to form this word. This is a good word. Okay. <laughs> so. So we're getting by Z. Yes. But Z. Z. <laughs> yes. Z. <laughs> Yes, yeah. by the Z, not only does it give free plural, but possible of double S if we have an S in hand. Yes, Pretty that cool. is also what it's going to do. It only adds the, yeah, the Z adds the S to the end of a word. Uh, but that you're amazed at how many times that can, that, can, that can be helpful, right? In this particular case, if we didn't have an S lying around, we'd still be able to form Azures. Um, and okay. we already own D, just so everyone knows. We do already own D. If I go back to uh, patents right now, um, we already have the D. Right, we have the D sitting around. So if green makes anything with a D, uh, orange is uh, orange has got that covered. So let's all right, let's do it. That seems we're locking like it in. Yes. Yeah, okay, do it. we're we're gonna buy a power, and so both teams are getting a power now. So we're gonna do Azures, which is I'll write this down. We're making um, four dollars and a stock. We are buying the 
uh, Z, which is only two dollars. So two dollars and a Z for Zeppelin. Uh, that is one of Brad's favorite. In fact, uh, comes in the box a little Zeppelin for the start player marker. I don't know if I have that around. Oh yes, I do. This is um, this is the uh, the first player marker Zeppelin. It's kind of fun. 1920s, right? This is the theme of the um, Art Deco, the Rockefeller Building, capitalism at its finest. You're buying letters, of course. Patents on official technologies of the age. And of course, you're flying around in a, Ze in a Zeppelin. So we're buying the Z. So it, it's we're earning $4 in a stock, and we're spending only $2 of that. So we'll bank the rest. Now, the other thing to decide is... Um, We've obviously spent these. These letters are now out. Uh, da, 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 da. And what we've got left in our... So the V is going to be on the board for the next player to use, which is kind of interesting because <laughs> uh, Green Team owns it. Uh, yeah, we can spell... Ooh. Uh, so, we can, <laughs> so we can... Uh, right now, we need to make a decision if we're ditching the uh either of the o's we don't have to, we don't maybe want to have two o's sitting around so we can ditch one and then we'll draw back up for next time we play is that what we want what to do, do? want to do do you want to drop an o drop all of them wing it Mulligan. yeah <laughs> what do we want to do let's it's... ditch one o yeah that seems like a Even solid plan. Ask, is it four points for one for is it four points for a six letter word yeah, let me pull up the score again. Um, so we're going to pull up the scoring. See right here, six letters is $4 and a stock. Okay. We already had um, we already had money in the bank. Uh, we had $2 left in the bank. So we just earned four more dollars, right? So we got up to six. And we spent two for get the Z. And we're down. We're back to four. And our stock total is not going to help us during the buy phase of the game, but at the end, it'll count. <clears throat> I think reasonably, I would always advise. I don't think having two. Uh, granted, you can make some words with two O's. Let's let's, let's be real here. You, you can uh, use vowels, but you have always the chance of drawing another O, and that would just be the worst. That would be the worst. So I would probably advise ditching it if everyone's down with that. Let's go from ooh to O. Oh. Yeah. Um, we'll do that. Uh we'll do we'll just say that we're gonna take one of these out. O and... for what's the building? Oh, it's an office. <laughs> I like asking, and now I've learned about the yarn barn. I just like knowing Yeah, the, the why <laughs> the yarn barn, because we couldn't really come up with a good Y building. It was funny because we were like, well, we want a barn. Well, yarn, and then it just became a thing. Um <laughs> H is a hotel, I believe. I believe H is a hotel. And V is a viaduct. Oh, a little, very, a little a little car. car. Yeah, there's a little car on there. He's, he's trapped forever. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going anywhere. All right, so then let's go over what the green... So now if you're watching and you're watching this uh, later, uh, or if you're in this audience and you still want to play on the green team also and make a cool word for green, let's go to green's situation right now. Um so what I need to do is we're going to take the O and the H off because that's in the orange player's hand. Let's fill back out the, the letters that come out. So the community letters, uh, the V stays there because it was not chosen. And we get new community letters. So we're going to bring out the N A. Oops, I'm going to get that. Uh, let's get the A at the right size here. Let's get that down. Okay, we got an A. And then we also have a T. T gets dealt. Now, what's neat about that is, um, so we deal these out right away so that the green player can immediately start. But they've already drawn up, right? Well, I'll show the cards just now in a, in a second. But in practice, what would happen is you deal the community letters right away, and green can start thinking and start planning. But it also happens before orange redraws their cards. So another, in a, in a way, this would also help us decide what to ditch. I didn't pull these up before we ditched the O, but that's sort of the timing, what would happen. So then let's deal out a hand for uh, green. Now, kept after making the word grieves, the M and the H were still in green's hand. And so we're dealing five more to get to the hand for green. So green is dealt now an I, a U, an R, 
an E and a D. Well, that's kind of interesting because um, they uh, they own the, the V and they don't want to use the D because the D is, um, let me unlock these so I can move these around and size these a little bit. The D is owned by orange, so that means green's going to have to consider whether or not to use it because uh, that would be falling into the orange trap. But also, uh, if possible, um, green doesn't want to use um, V because if it's used by orange, they make money, right? Green team would make money if uh, the V is, is used by their other team. Now, also keep in mind that because... Green is now in their first turn with a V owner, V patents, basically owns all the viaducts in the world. They can make two, green team can make two words. Each one has to be three letters or, or greater. So they can actually use all these letters to try and pull that off. So if you are watching this in our, in our YouTube comments, please shout out the word. And uh, we'll also be picking a winner on the green team to win a copy of Letter Tycoon. If you submit, it doesn't have to be the word picked. If you're just submitting words, we'll count you. For winning a copy there is the hand for green going into week two and I'll, uh we'll see who wants to play around with those letters as we go here all right i think that's it for letter tycoon for this week let me put back on our that was uh that's another round of letter tycoon actually I have some news to share as i was talking to breaking games asking when this version of the game will be coming out on their website I heard early February, so if you're interested after seeing all this uh, Letter Tycoon uh, on the stream and you want to get a copy for yourself, it plays with, I think, almost any gamer in my, any gamer or non-gamer in my family. I really feel like it's a broad category of who can have fun with this game. And that's Letter Tycoon. Uh, thanks for playing, everybody. That was, that's a lot of fun. I like, uh, I mean, it's game on in 2024. We're getting games on the stream, we're getting games off the stream. But now, questions, if we have any, from anybody who, uh, if you want to know anything about what we're making at Cardboard Alchemy or gaming, publishing, designing, crowdfunding, anything. We have, uh, we have a lot of people who uh, <clears throat> have had questions in the past, so if we don't get any today, uh, like for example, if you see the stream late and you want to ask a question you can always get it in on the on the youtube and i'll we'll pop it up in another week here's a question from axel uh birthday this weekend that is true thank you for remembering my my birthday this weekend um excited i love birthdays um so i have a lot of time planned time i just got my son a playstation 5 a little late to the playstation 5 party but uh, what I want to do this weekend is play some PlayStation 5 with my son. That's going to be a lot of fun. But also, I mentioned in the last stream, I like to go out to a brand new restaurant, and I have one planned. Um, Italian restaurant owned by a friend of mine, a longtime friend uh, who I haven't seen in forever. Uh, it's a, I used to work at Disney Toon Studio. I used to work at Disney for many years, and I um, came in and out of Disney uh, and I worked for Disney Tune. They made all of the... Thank you very much for all the well wishes on the birthday. Uh, Disney Tune was responsible for Tinkerbell movies and the Planes movies. And um, I worked on Tinkerbell, the winter movie where she meets her sister. It was a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, it's so funny because that that building, the Disney Tune building, uh, had no cafeteria and Disney was trying to figure out what to do. So they they hired a personal chef to build a small little restaurant at the at the at the building. I mean this is Disney's cool like that. So there was a little tiny um restaurant that was they hired an Italian chef to build a restaurant there, but it was the inside commissary sort of for Disney Tune. And that chef, uh Lucio Badon, uh, his um his office was right next to mine in Disney Tune. So he and I would hang out and talk and talk food cuz I love talking food. And Lucio's food is amazing. And he opened his own restaurant in Los Angeles called Vicini. Uh, I can't wait to go check it out. Um, uh, his food's amazing. Now, a fun thing that I did with Lucio that I thought was, was hilarious was I used to do this thing in Los Angeles where I would 
uh, I would take like a food, like either hot wings or burritos. Like I had breakfast burritos and I would try and make, cause I'm a geek and a dork like this. I was like a spreadsheet of the best breakfast burritos in all of the town. And we would rate, I would take a team and we'd rate them based on like, okay, there's the size, there's the cost, there's the meat to cheese ratio, all the stuff you think about with that, all that. And I told this contest to Lucio and he was like, I will make you the best breakfast burrito. So he entered the contest and he kicked serious butt, but I will say he didn't make it. It's it, it, his was so um, gourmet and it wasn't like greasy, which is not that that's what it had to be. His salsa was impeccable, but it wasn't that kind of street corner vibe to it. So his burritos were super fancy and they weren't some people I rated it really high, but some people were like, that's not a breakfast burrito. It doesn't have that, that, um, I don't know what that feeling is that, that kind of, um, greasy spoon. It's not, that's not what a breakfast burrito is supposed to have, but Lucio, uh, made his also was unbelievable. And he did have a good, strong contender in the breakfast burrito contest. I did tell him also that I want to do a hot dog contest because I was telling him all about Chicago hot dogs. And so one time he surprised me and he changed the entire menu of the commissary that day into hot dogs. I had a hot dog bar with amazing toppings. He had done all of these and Rosie would like this. He had like, you know, grilled mushrooms and he had done like all these fancy toppings that you could put on a hot dog that I have not seen in any hot dog bar. It was really cool because it was like you could choose whatever you wanted on a hot dog that day. Um, anyway, it sounds like my hash brown dipping station that I did at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it was a really neat idea to have that. It's like um, it's like having all this choice, right? But although this is a funny story, something that um, Lucy told me when I was at that spot was I used to ask him why he didn't have a menu that was as wide as you know, like he didn't have fries on his menu, and I happen to love fries. Uh, and he didn't, I mean, he didn't do, it was on a burger and fries kind of place. And so he had like a select number of items. Right. And I said something to him about it. Like, you know, do you, should the menu have more things on it? And, you know, he's not a gamer or anything. We didn't talk games at that time, but he was just kind of like, no, more choices AP, you know, basically he's like, no, no, no. More choice is not always a good thing. Um, you know, I, I, if I, I want to craft a couple choices for you so that you have something to choose from out of a list, but I don't want to have you go all over the place. I want to curate what you, what you should be having, you know, pick from these items. Um, uh, it's funny. Stephanie asked, does Lucia know about Carter Kitchen? Does not know yet. I can't wait to tell him about it. I actually, in my very first game called What the Food, I made a promo card for Lucio. There's actually a promo card for him in the game because it's all a food-based food fight. So I put him in there. It was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Look at this. I got I got a promise that if I, I, you know, I come to Puebla for my birthday. Look at that. Look at that, a culinary experience. What's your favorite style of uh, game, like co-op or worker placement, et cetera? Um, I am, this is a good question. Uh, I make a lot of worker placement games. So I have been making worker placement games for years. I appreciate worker placement a lot, but I feel like that is, these days, I don't know that you could just do a worker placement. I feel like, say, Drama's Edge is combining worker placement and, uh, and engine building and area control. It's kind of a, a, it's a, we're mixing up soups each time, right? So one of those the cocktails I really like or the soups I really like is when worker placement and deck building get combined together. I happen to love deck building. So uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak, for example, love that game. Uh, I have I have thoughts that I'll probably build, build a, I mean, want to build a deck builder. In fact, it, you know, Carpet Alchemy, we're working on a bag builder, very similar to a deck builder. Um, so I do like that. But I also, um, and I've said this plenty of times, variable player powers are kind of like my jam. I will always love a game without, I mean, like, so we're playing Three Room Circus, right? No variable player powers there. It's about the tableau you're building, customizing. Um, there isn't a, oh, I own this circus, so I get a little something here. But I haven't met a game where I didn't mind when that got inserted. Let me tell you, uh, I wrote an article on that for, um, I used to run a 
blog called The League of Game Makers, and I wrote an article about the different types of variable player powers because you have variable player powers that are too too powerful. What do you do? You make them one time. Uh, you make them have a cost. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can work with vari variable player powers. So an example of one that's powerful but one time only is a game by Tom Jolly, uh, Dracon, where you're going into a dungeon with all these other people and one of you is the wizard and the wizard has a one-time walk through the walls ability. Um, and strategically, you're trying to decide when to use that ability versus a game like, um, you know, let's say if you take Andromeda's Edge, you have a power that you can use, say, every time that worker is in play. Um, you know, um, so there's different ways of, of of doing it. In Critter Kitchen, we use variable player powers in a couple different ways. Um, there is the type of player power that you get once per turn, and that is our zoo chef. So you don't have this. Um, they're not, they're not breaking the game for too long. They come in and then they they go out. Um, but also you have a global player power, which is your restaurateur that you could add into the game and have a power for the entire game. And that has to be a lot softer because you can't have those tremendously upend the way that you play. So there's a lot of different ways to do variable player powers. Super excited that Critter Kitchen has multiple kinds happening. Deck building, engine building, worker placement, insta back. That's what I'm saying. 100%. Um, interesting. Not a fan of deck builders, but love bag builders. That's fascinating. So bag builders have some interesting variants from a deck builder. It's you know, there's a couple different ways you can do the bag, too. You can do the bag where everything has to come out. I'd be curious which one you like better. Everything has to come out before the bag can start over. That feels a little bit more like what you do with a deck, because you have to get all the way down to zero. And then there's the bag builders where you're constantly putting it in. Uh, so you may pull it again. You know, if you look at Quacks of Quidlinburg, uh, you're changing the bag texture, but it's never quite emptying. So you may never see that blue one come out ever. Right? And that happens. You're like, oh, where is that token? Um, and Axel asked, did I get a copy of Wonderland's War? And I did arrive. I'm super excited. Wonderland's War just arrived. So I have a big box to open. And I cannot wait to find out what that bag builder is like. Because I've heard really good things. Really good things about that one. Um, Wonderland's War, I can't wait to try. Cracks of Quindlenburg is a staple in the studio. I love that game. A lot... There was uh, pre-pandemic, I had a group coming over all the time to play Quacks. We played it quite a bit and upgraded the copy with all the fancy tokens from BGG. Um, yeah, so Axel says, it's a nice birthday gift. That's how I treat Kickstarters, by the way, in crowdfunding. I, do, I don't know when they're coming. So they feel like Christmas presents, birthday presents, surprise, you have a new game. Um, I love that aspect of it. Do you have any board games on your birthday list? Oh, that's an interesting one. I don't have a... Uh, it's funny. I, I've mentioned this on the stream before, too. I always put board games on Christmas and birthday lists. And then um, I feel like because when you buy board games, you, everyone else in your life is afraid to buy one because they're like, oh, he already has everything that he could want. Even though I'm like, no, this one and this one and this one and this one. Um at the moment, though, like some kind of in between, is there anything on my list? I mean, I, I, I guess I would. It's a, it's a, that's an interesting one. What is still out there that I haven't picked up? I, I can tell you one right now. Uh, Blood on the Clock Tower is on my list. That's a big, it's a big giant one. I've been thinking about buying that game for a while, but it's a, it's a box that's just like imposing. It's like, oh man, that thing's huge. But I like. I have, I have to ask you. You've been watching No Rose Bard's videos. I have. What do you think of Button Clock Down now? Now you've seen it because before you hadn't. Are you excited? Uh, what do I think? What do I think about the game or their show or what? The, the game. Oh man, I have to tell you. So I I played Werewolf for many years. Um, I do like the games like Werewolf and Mafia and so forth. I been like i said many many years of doing those i don't do them at cons i, I like to do it with um people i know and, and lately this these these years i haven't like found that group again you know but i used to host these things and during the pandemic this is really fun if peter hayward is is watching this 
when lockdown happened and we were all like, what are we going to do? Peter actually started a game of werewolf on Slack, which is a chat program where you can have different channels and whatnot. So what would happen is the, the everyone would get dealt their role secretly by Peter. And then the three werewolves would have their own chat, secret chat to, to talk and type and everything else like that. It was really neat to play it. Um, playing it, uh, in a chat was interesting because everything you said was recorded. So if later someone you were like, no, I never said that people could scroll up and be like, no, 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 you said you, you know, you don't have that role. Um, so you're a liar. But so I'm watching uh, blood on the clock tower and I've been watching no rolls barred. As Rosie said, I've been soaking up the, the gameplay because I'm uh, going to try and play it at tantrum con. I'm very excited about that. And I wanted to see what it's like. And I've heard about how it's, a, you know, it's got some things fixed for Werewolf. So the, the the person running it has a much more interactive role. It doesn't feel like they're out of it for the whole game because they can actually change. Um, they can actually change uh, what's happening with some key, you know, votes that come down to the moderator. Also, the problem with Werewolf's player elimination. And of course, yeah, that's also fixed. You feel really bad if you've got 14 people and then round one we go let's take rosie out of it and rosie's like oh what am i doing um <laughs> but in blood in the clock tower rosie could still make arguments and talk to people and have secret chats and would still get one vote just one vote um and a lot of this reminds me the reason i was telling the werewolf on slack is a lot of that reminds me of the interaction that peter put on that because what he did is he did a channel that the ghosts could still chat make they couldn't chat to the players but they could have a lot of interaction and chat and not taking everybody out of the game is fantastic, right? What I, I found... have very fond memories of playing Blood on the Clock Down whenever we play it because there's certain kinds of wins, like a mayor win or whatever. And we had a mayor win, apparently very rare. My partner was the yeah. mayor. It came down to the final vote and I had to choose to vote for him or not. And I, and I, nice. I trusted him and he got a mayor win and they were like, that's not happened in years. <laughs> and it was wow. amazing. I actually had one. So in that one I was talking about with Peter, I um, there was a player who would become mayor. And and so in Peter's version of Werewolf, the very first vote was to make a mayor. So not a kill, but to make a mayor. And then the mayor uh, got to pick a deputy. And then the mayor and the deputy got a private channel and they could talk. But of course, when the mayor picks a deputy, you don't know if you're picking a wolf. Or the deputy doesn't know if they're being picked by a wolf. And so you've got this chat that starts off with like, I have no idea if I can trust you, right? And I was in one of those chats. Uh, famously, I had one with Manny. Manny Vega, by the way, was a wolf. And he invited me in. And I, we started doing this thing. And I started, like, really believing Manny. And I got I got taken for a ride. Manny crushed me in that game. I trusted him. Um, he did a really great job as a wolf. And I, we were in that private chat for a while, so it was a lot of fun. He was trying to figure out what story to say in the Wolf Channel and what story to tell me then in the Mayor Deputy Channel. Um, so uh, Axel's saying we should get a game of Blood on the Clock Tower on Discord. I agree, actually. I think that it would be fun to put that on our Discord and find a way to get that played a couple times. I would love to possibly run it. I want to get, like, uh, um, want to get, and introduced to it at uh, Tantrum Con and then figure out what I think about it. So, but to go back to your question, Rosie, I also feel like by watching the No Rolls Barred versions, I'm watching people who have like played a lot. So it took me a minute to go, what strategies are even happening right now? For example, something that they do that I don't even know if that's canon that everyone does is they started uh, giving everybody three roles that they could be. And I noticed that came out of, I'm sort of like watching the show evolve. And I think it comes out of the fact that in Blood on the Clock Tower, the, the demon player is given three bluffs. And maybe they all felt like it was starting to become obvious who had the bluffs. And so all the good players started doing three bluffs. So, so it just became this like thing that I think was specific to that show. I'm not sure because we'll find out if that's a technique people do where they hand two roles so so a good player hands two roles that they're not and a role that they are to kind of bury it in there to give someone information without giving everything okay so that thanks for confirming it three for three is a common gameplay now 
I have watched some people do a live for all three <laughs> as well. So there's like layers happening. That's what I noticed about watching No Rolls Barred is there are layers happening. So I watched a particularly one of my favorite episodes that I've seen so far. I don't know if everybody knows Gnarly Carly, but she has an Instagram channel and she does um, uh, has done community for Lucky Duck Games. That's how I met her. And she's on that show. And she's extremely good at Blood on the Cocktail. I mean, she's running circles around some some people. Uh, she did a, a, there was a really great, great one where she was the, she was the demon. And there was another player who unfortunately got a bad deal by the moderators to look at, um, they were a, a normal person that would normally get to look at two players and see, see if what, a, get a role that one of them is but they were poisoned on the first round and so they looked at the uh demon and the minion and got two roles that happened to be the cover story that carly was using so they got like verification that their info was good in a really twisted way and what that taught me is and i'm going to take this going forward do not trust i mean you obviously have to like start to trust your info possibly, but you need vectors to confirm that info or it ain't good because there's so many ways you could be uh, poisoned or drunk or twisted or like something's happening where you don't have what you have, what you think you have. I think that sounds really fun. I love that, that uh, nature of it. So I've never played it with a group of people that I know. So I'd be interested to when yeah. they do that, <laughs> there'd be even yeah. less trust. <laughs> I, I like, I do like, um, this reminds me of the meta that starts to happen on some games when you play them over and over. Like, for example, when Among Us, it's still popular with some, but we, Among Us was actually on our Discord when it was really hot. I, we had games of Among Us and that one builds up this kind of like, okay, this lie always works or doesn't work. And then the meta sort of starts to evolve. That group starts to get a, if you do this in the first minute, we know you're bad. Like, so then they have to adapt to like how the never go, never go left because that's always how people have been caught in the last couple of times. So uh, it's interesting when you, I think it's very hard to start up a new, probably playing one-offs is probably really hard because you don't know anything and people are just making choices as they can. But when you get layers with a group that you've already played with, wow, that can be, that could be fun. Don't fully trust anything and always be open to other people's interpretation of truth. <laughs> nice. I don't want to play with Gib and Tessie. She scares me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to see if we can get a, uh, a version on the Discord. That would be a lot of fun to play some games. I wonder there. if we can get a UK Games Expo game going there with them anyone as well. Because. We do it there as well. You can sign up. You have to run over and sign up immediately because it's really popular. I'm sure it's it is. Popular. It sounds like a, a fun version of that kind of game. Aircon. It's been thrown there's, out there. There's Aircon too. I'm there. The takeaway <laughs> from the stream is don't trust Manny Vega when playing Wolf. I mean, Manny is a is a good player. I think it tortured him a lot, that particular one. It exhausted him because he had to keep intricate lies to me. Like he was maintaining this whole facade uh, during our chats, and he was like, "That took a lot out of me," because it was a it was a tough one. But he pulled it off so well. And there was another one with so Alex Cutler's uh, wife Nicole was in a game. She's also a brilliant, brilliant player, and she was mayor, and I was deputy, and and we were both good, but we were super cautious. We built up this trust the whole game, and in the very final moments of the game, Nicole didn't tell me something, but she was trying to help me. She was she was trying to set up her own fall in a way that would keep me away from like any danger. But I looked at it as like a sudden twist, like she was li like I. She didn't tell me. She she wanted it to be. Like she wanted my surprise to be real, so she didn't tell me. And then I thought I was being backstabbed, so I, I, I turned around and tried to get her out. And it was this whole thing where she's like, "I should have told you what I was about to do." Uh, there's so many levels, fun levels in those games. 
Mm, it's good stuff. I'm trying to think of a a, a non. Um, I'm not going to say that's a party game, but I'm trying to think of a strategy game that's on my list that I don't have, um, and that's not a crowd funder that I'm waiting for. Like you know, the Beast Isles, Shattered Isles. I'm, I'm waiting for that one. Um, I think. I think because Wonderland's War has just come in and there's a bunch in that pile that are like, play me, play me. I'm, I'm kind of okay. You're good. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of good for the moment. And this will only last a very short amount of time. And then I got to go back to what do I need to get in the collection, right? I want Septima. That's Ooh, that's one I would love to play. Septima. It looks really cool. Um, so yeah, hoping to get to play that at some point soon. We got other votes here. Canvas is one we are waiting for. I have never played Canvas. Coolest display as well. Like storage, it goes on the wall. So oh, all neat. three make a panorama together. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. I love it's that. really good. Um, when I was making uh, Expansity with Breaking Games, the side of the box is a, a strip of like a building with windows and stuff like that. And our idea was that each Expansity would be another layer of the building. <laughs> And then finally we would cap it with like a roof because you then you stack your, your expansity games. That would have been really neat. And then a Zeppelin. <laughs> and then a Zeppelin up there. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. None of the games we've been working on at Carbon Alchemy makes sense to do that yet. But we will get there someday where we're having like the boxes go together. That was a, that's a neat idea. Tim Fowers is particularly good at thematic boxes. Um, his Burgle Bros paperback, hardback all look like things when you put them on their side like a building or yeah a, a, they're very cool very cool for all of his paperback there's a book cover, book uh like they would they look like books right yeah they do look like books which means you can't find them on your bookcase <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah that's true i love i love to see creative stuff like that and it's it's been interesting also in the misteret right now in um carbon documents making the andromeda's edge boxes and whatnot and what to put on the the sides, the inside box sides are also an interesting one always. Like, is that, and I'm a big fan of art. Art goes on those. I don't want to, I don't want to see, I know some, some companies put ads on there. I'm just like, nah, no, 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 not doing that. <laughs> need to see art. That's what we need to see. I'd be interested um, to gonna... stop and Google a game as they're unboxing a game. Like, oh, hang on a second. I just don't see how that point you're looking at and going, this is the time <laughs> to look this for a is different the time. Game. No, it's, yeah, no. <laughs> I haven't ever had that work where I'm playing. Um, so if, if Devere had done that on Three Ring Circus or whatever, and I'm playing Three Ring Circus. Now I do like other Devere games, right? So so they might have been able to get me by going like, you know, have you tried? I mean, White Castle White is Castle. after yeah. Three Ring Circus, which um, mm -hmm. Grant was saying White, uh, White Castle is amazing. But if I saw White Castle, I mean, even if I saw a game that I'm, I, I guess I could put White Castle on my list. Even if I saw that on the side, I wouldn't like think, oh yeah, I need to go. Just that that's never worked. That whole let me put all the other games we make on the side. Yeah. For me anyway. Maybe it works for other people. I, I do think the one that could work, this is a tangent gone off the rails, but um we used <laughs> to make pamphlets at breaking games that had like a very small pamphlet with other games in it. That might if it wasn't obtrusive, that might work because I'd be like, oh, you know what? I had fun and here's a, it was like an accordion that had some other ideas of what you could get. I get those all the time. And the first thing I do when I unbox a game is put them to the side and never know where they've gone. <laughs> yes. I'm like, awesome. thank you, unbox. <laughs> I don't think they work a lot, but I think they're better to me than the side of the box, which I, I definitely would rather have art or something fun there. Oh no, for uh, sure. I still look through them. I find them interesting, but my brain yeah. is going new game, new game. <laughs> yeah, I can see um, where it might happen to Cardboard Alchemy someday is obviously Flamecraft is our number one game. Um, but now granted, Lucky Duck is the one that's publishing it now, so Lucky Duck uh, we never really talked about a leaflet in there, but down the road I could see Flamecraft having something that says, if you really like this, you know, there is Critter Kitchen. Like you might a game that arguably would be loved by the same fans could definitely be talked about in there. Um, <laughs> the pamphlet is always the last thing that goes back in the box. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's also, um, 
Yeah, Ellie's like, we're still going strong. That's right, because uh, it's Friday and we're in uh, game mode. I do probably should keep the streams a little tighter. Uh, we'll find <laughs> out. Well, we should have a poll someday. Do you want these to be shorter streams so that you don't have uh, rambling? Um, or do you like the the chatty streams? We were doing really well till question time. And then I threw in Blood on the Clock Down Errol's part. And it all went. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we can wrap it up. We can say that if you have additional questions for Cardboard Alchemy, throw those comments in the stream while you're working on your green team words. Uh, because then we can go to our next stream and answer those questions. We have uh, questions that were asked of us on we have a list that we can always go over. So if you ask it and it doesn't get answered now, uh, please do you know chime in. We'll we'll get to it. Rambling is awesome. Great, good because I happen to be uh, apparently able to do that on Friday. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That is true because Chris and I are working on Drama's Edge files right now. So, um, so right. Uh, I suppose I should get back to that though. I love doing these streams. I love uh, everyone who's chiming in. Thanks for uh, joining us. Cheers to uh, 2024. We're almost at the year of the dragon. So, it's going to be an exciting year. And uh, appreciate all your time and enjoy the, you know, enjoy your weekends. Uh, Game on. All right. Bye. Cheers.